everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Parkinson's disease. So, let's get into it. So the first three key points you need to know about Parkinson's disease is that it's progressive, so it gets worse over time. It's debilitating and it affects motor function. So how does that work? What's going on in the body for somebody who has Parkinson's disease? Basically, there is an imbalance in their neurotransmitters of dopamine and acetylcholine. So when you don't have Parkinson's disease, these two neurotransmitters are balanced. So you have dopamine, which is inhibitory, and acetylcholine, which is excitatory. And that works out. They even each other out normally. In a person who has Parkinson's, they have less dopamine, so that throws off the balance. And because of that, their acetylcholine overstimulates, which causes all of those kind of classic motor signs and symptoms, which we'll talk about here in a sec. So who is at risk for developing Parkinson's? More common in men, ages 40 to 70, um, there's a strong genetic component, so if you have a family member who has Parkinson's, you are also more likely to get it. Um, it can be related to exposure to certain toxins, and then long-term use of certain medications, specifically antipsychotics. So that first key fact about Parkinson's we wanted to remember is that it's progressive, so it gets worse over time. So there are five stages your patient with Parkinson's will go through. So the first stage is when they will have unilateral shaking or tremors of just one limb. Then it gets worse. Second stage, now we have bilateral limbs that are shaking or having tremors. And they're going to start having that mask-like face. The third stage, postural instability. So they're going to have a harder time with walking, balance, and their gait might be like a shuffling gait. Four, akinesia. So this is loss of voluntary movement. So they have loss of control of movements voluntarily. Um, and then they might be appearing very rigid. And then five, the final stage, now they've lost the ability to walk altogether. A mnemonic device to help you remember the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease is SMART. So S stands for that shuffling gait. They might have stooped posture, slurred speech or slower speech, swallowing problems. So as it progresses, they become more of a risk for aspiration. And then slower digestion, meaning constipation. So they might have issues with GI symptoms like constipation. M, they have that mask-like face and mood swings. Um, they can also have other issues with their mood, like depression, that akinesia again, that rigidity of the muscles, and then tremors, um, and kind of those classic tremors that our Parkinson's patients will have is pill rolling tremors, which is kind of like um, these movements of the fingers that you might see. When it comes to our nursing interventions for these patients, things we want to monitor for they're swallowing because they are an aspiration risk, so we want to make sure they're okay with swallowing. And do a full, thorough GI assessment, checking for those constipation issues, asking them about their bowel movements, listening to their bowel sounds, the whole thing. Their diet, semi-solid foods or thickened liquids because of that aspiration risk. Um, we want them to have high calorie and high protein. They might need to use assistive devices. So this is assistive devices with things like eating, which is good because that will help promote independence, or assistive devices such as like rails in the bathroom or rails in the shower to help them with movement. Offer rest with activity. So activity is going to be good. We want them up, exercising, movement is good, but offering rest in between active periods is going to be important as well. Encouraging range of motion activities and having a lot of help, right? So these are patients where we're going to need other members of the healthcare team as well. 
So physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, these are all going to be really helpful resources for you as the nurse to help work with these patients. And when it comes to medications, right, so there's kind of the classic meds that we all think of when we hear Parkinson's, right? So carbidopa, levodopa, those are important because they help increase dopamine. And remember, the whole problem is less dopamine. So it's going to help with that. Um, Ropenerol also helps release dopamine. So do antivirals. Anticholinergics, they're really more for like symptom issues, so they're going to help with like the rigidity and such. Um, and then COMT inhibitors, usually these are used in a combination with levodopa to help it last longer. So lots of medication options for these patients. And then non-medication options, other therapies that we're not going to do but our patient might benefit from would be deep brain stimulation. So those are our nursing interventions for our patients who are dealing with Parkinson's disease. I did want to mention a couple of things. When it comes to the diagnosis, how do you get diagnosed with Parkinson's? It is really based on those signs and symptoms. So that's why it's so important for us to know those and be able to recognize those right away. And also, this is a progressive disease. They do not get better. We can help them. We can manage symptoms and things, but it does get worse over time. Some complications that could occur could include things like dementia. So stuff to keep an eye out for in your Parkinson's patient. And that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.